Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video, which is part six of the Lavinia Tours, we will be looking at the first part of part six and that is building the foundations of, wait for it, a meadow. We are taking the mice, they are going to dance into a meadow full of flowers and pollen and some of them will succumb to hay fever. Yes, hay fever. So, enough chat from me, come with me, let me show you how it's done. We're building it from the ground up. Onwards! Okay, so starting with the preparation, you will need your journal. Now I've got the Lavinia journal, large size, the smooth variety. Two pieces of multifarious A4 card, and I'm just using a pen, it's a Micron Sigma, just to draw a wiggly line and holding the two pieces of card together and cutting along that wiggly line. And that gives me exact copies, which is what I want. Right, so the next step, I'm using my craft mat basically to give me a guide to where I'm going to fold it. So I'm doing, I've marked a centimetre away from the edge on both ends and joined the dots. And now, because I've got a metal ruler, I'm just folding it up over that ruler. You could do that with any ruler. It doesn't have to be metal. Now let's colour some Lockta. Oh, this is fun. So I've got my needle tip bottles and they are full of dinkles. So we've got two pieces of Lockta paper and one piece of Multifarious. Some dinkles yellow, some dinkles amber in separate bottles. And I'm just doing wiggly lines. <laughs> covering that paper but look at the stunning colours so I'm giving it a little bit of a shake with some Dinkles Amber adding some spritzes of water with my spray bottle and some Dinkles Mustard Seed look at that oh, I just love it so that's what I'm doing is just getting the colour using the um, yellow, the amber and the mustard seed and sprinkling them. Now let's look at the mouse characters. So I've got my wet wing stamp which I'm stamping this time in Versafine Claire Warm Breeze. Now all the others will be stamped in Versafine Claire Nocturne so I'm using mouses, meeses, mices, mice from all of the stamps on some multifarious card A6. Okay. Now I'm just stamping them out a couple of times, not for any reason in particular, just that I thought that will help me perhaps for the next journal page if I've already got one done. And I'm just cutting them because I'm only going to need one of each. So there we go. That's my pile of mice and I'm chopping up the wet wings ready to attach some. So cut them out and using some Elements Ink Sundance and a size 9 stencil brush just going yellow around these mice. And as you can see, I've already cut those wings out and they're sort of next to where I want them to go. So using a little tiny dollop of Bippity Boppity Glue, attach your wings to your mice. If you want them to look like the wings are behind them, cut the wing set in two and stick them under their armpits. That's what I'm doing. There we go. I do love that mouse. Super. Jobs are good. Un. So all I'm doing now is putting those to one side 
for a little later. Let's look at doing some flowers. Same sort of idea, stamping some out so that we're ready for later. So I'm using A6 Multifarious Moon Pods stamp. I do love this stamp. And stamping it in Versify Clair Nocturne. Now I've got two bits together here because I might actually need half a flower because I'm going to be doing some overlapping flowers. I might need a stem. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but anyway. Just do a variety of these because the more you've got, the more you have to rip up and play with. So this is again Elements Ink Sundance. Can you tell it's going to be a very yellowy, orangey piece? Just like brilliant sunshine. So I'm using a piece of A4 Multifarious and I'm just using the moon pods over and over and over and over. And Versifying Clair Nocturne. And this is just to make sure that I have enough flowers for my meadow. Now this perhaps isn't the most normal meadow you've ever seen, but then this is in Lavinia land. And it's a very special meadow because it's very, very highly pollinated. Pollinated? Full of pollen. So again, just using the Sundance around the shapes of the flowers. Fab. And I'm just cutting them so that they're easier for rippage later. Okay, so open up your journal at the page you want to use. Using some Sundance and a size 9 stencil brush, let's start giving it a little bit of colour. Don't stress too much about perfect blending or anything. We are just wanting some yellow on that page. So I try and start from the corners and work my way out because that way it helps me not feel so bad about it if I've made made it a little bit stronger in the at the start off, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I'm quite happy to have the occasional blotchery there. Because it's going to transform itself into movement. So just using my spray bottle, all it has in it is water and a little bit of paper towel. I'm just taking some of that off. So we get these lovely pockets where the background shows through. Now, do you remember those bits of A4 we started with in the beginning? I'm just popping them where I want them to go and measuring so that I can cut them to size. Happy days. Take them off and cut them. Lovely, lovely. So make sure that you've got a flexible bend by bending it the other way and then work out where you want them to go. So I'm going to add my colour before I actually stick this down. So again, it's the Sundance. That seems to be the base. go putting them back where they're supposed to be going ripping time hurrah my favorite therapy okay so I'm literally picking up those moon pods that I stamped earlier and just having a little bit of a rip around the edges now I tend to do things like this um, on a piece of multifarious and then rip them out so that I can actually pop them. I know I get a good stamp then, you see, and I can pop them in my journal. And adding the yellow to the outside edge that you've ripped, it just, you know, makes it all fit in. So using my bibbidi-bobbidi glue, just create your meadow.
And just because, you know, I think because it's on this lovely yellow, it's automatically making me smile because it's so happy. The colour is such a happy colour. Okay, so. Overlapping flowers. What on earth can this mean? So we're back to ripping again. And I'm just, you might have noticed, I've just taken the top of a moon pod off. And all I'm doing is working out where I want it to go. That's the joy with the moon pods. It's either a large one or a small one. And then just don't try and get it neaty neatly. Work out where it should stick on there. Put some glue on the back of it. If my fingers moved, you'll be able to see that I'm measuring it up. I'm just popping some glue where I want it to go. And because that top bit isn't stuck down, I'm able to lift it up. Any time you want to, Emma Jo, you need to, okay. We're doing the smaller one as well. Now we make sure it's stuck down, lift it up, turn it over and cut it. So it's neat and tidy and look, overlapping flowers. Hurrah! So I'm doing this all the way along. If there's any point where it looks like it's going to overlap. Great fun. And I'm going to stick down my top bits. Now this is a magic little thing that is going to hide our text and a hive of bees. Because you know where there's pollen, there's going to be pollinators and that will be our bees and our butterflies. Now here, I've got some washi tape. Now I've got the washi tape art set two and the very thin, almost gingham, uh, yellow and white tape, which I'm just using to help me keep my pages or my bits of my top bits of paper together. It makes for a much nicer fold or lift up. So we're, we're nearly there, aren't we? Preparing the damp locter. Now, while locter is damp, what you can do is, is just start moving it. You can either stretch it so the fibres start to look all um, fabric-like or you can make holes in it and that's what I'm doing here just by rubbing into that lock to paper. You can help it dry with a little bit of help from a, a Ranger Air heat tool and this is the other bit of paper that lock to paper that I did at the same time and it hasn't got any holes in it. So this is the one, the one without holes that I'm now ripping. And I'm placing it very carefully and sticking it down with my bibbidi bobbidi glue. But look at that orange with the yellow that we've got from the sun dance. It's just like sunshine, isn't it? Or is it just me? I loves it. And just keep adding little bits of this lock to rip and stick and rip and stick until you're happy with the amount of lock to and colour that you have on your page. Now at the moment I'm focusing on that top bit but it will go throughout the piece it's just so easy to rip it's lovely it's just lovely and it helps you create movement in your piece I love it that reminds me at the moment like a, a sunset but 
that's not the way we're going. <laughs> there we go. So if you like, these are almost clouds of pollen that are just floating in the air. And they add to this feeling of hot summer day, intense. N not as in we've gone camping, but you know, when we're intense, we are, it's an intense heat of a summer's day. So all I'm doing is ripping and sticking here, there and everywhere. Now I am paying some attention to that top seam just because I can't hide it completely, but I can have a good go at trying to camouflage it so that it's not a harsh line all the way across. So just keep sticking and fixing. So you've got lots of yellow and orange on that lock to paper. And just remember to try and mix it up a little bit. Sorry, I'm being quiet because really all I'm doing at the moment is sticking and fixing. I don't think you need me to tell you the same thing over and over again. So I'm afraid you're just watching my process at the moment. So we're layering, there we go. And look, that's what it looks like with your top down. Ah, so we're starting to add some of that lock to paper to the underside of the top section. And these are the bits that had holes in them that I rather like. So I've just ripped them round almost like, you know, those dried apple slices you can get. I rather like that idea and I'm just popping them down because even though they're not flowers necessarily they do give a sort of hint that they might be imitating them imagine clouds of pollen that imitate flowers so I'm going back to adding some flowers to the top and making sure that they have stems going down to the bottom So you remember you've got your stockpile of flowers and now that we've put the layers on underneath, you know, that with all the lock to paper, it's just layering up again, isn't it? Fab. So I've cut that flower stem in two, popped the flower on the top and made sure the stem is there for underneath.
just keep adding your flowers until you're happy. Finishing the colour. So now we're going to go back in with our Elements Ink Sundance and our size 9 stencil brush and those white gaps are going to change to yellow. And I think that's fab. So that's the end of the first part. Well done, you did it! I thoroughly enjoyed doing this. It's lovely to be able to build something up from the ground up, you know, layer upon layer upon layer until you've actually got the characters in, the colour is in, the glitz and glam is in, and your story is in. I hope you've enjoyed yourself too. Thank you so much for coming along. If you've got any comments you'd like to make, please pop them in the post below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. But in the meantime, folks, happy crafting. <laughs>